So it looks like I'm back, and today I want to do something different by particularly focusing on an influential figure in psychoanalysis. I'm going to be focusing on Jacques Lacan, and I'm hoping that by focusing on him, I want to make an introduction centered around the practice of psychoanalysis and how it was particularly conceived by him. I want to particularly focus on the question, what kind of truth does psychoanalysis offer right now? Because I know, at least in my own experience, I had my own forms of resistances to psychoanalysis. And I will say a little bit more so once we get to that particular point in the question. Lacan's case for truth is intimately intertwined to the psychoanalytic clinical practice. Perhaps we can take as a starting point a few comments that Lacan gave at a lecture he delivered to psychiatric interns in 1967. These particular comments were pertaining the psychoanalytic encounter and the way in which psychoanalysis is shrouded in mystery. Lacan speaks to them, Psychoanalysis does have the virtue of stating very clearly, and with no more reference than is required, the mystery surrounding some of the words we use, words that have their own shock effect, that make sense. The word truth, for example, what is the truth? Well, psychoanalysis itself is one of those words. At first, everyone feels that it means something special. And above all, the truth is, in this case, articulated through a mode of representation that gives the word psychoanalysis its style and gives it its second job, if it can be put that way. The truth in question is exactly the same as the mythical image that it represents. It is something hidden in nature, and then it comes out quite naturally, emerges from the well, it comes out. But that isn't enough. It speaks. It says things, usually things we're not expecting. The peculiarity and why I wanted to focus in this excerpt of Lacan highlights key points to how is it that he conceives of truth, especially how is it that this notion of truth pertains the analytic practice and its experience. But that already invites a question. What is the psychoanalytic experience? What images or scenes uh, do we have in mind when we think of psychoanalysis? There must be at least something you think about when the word psychoanalysis pops up. In this age with the oversaturation of information, myth, narrative, and discourses, one is bound to at least have heard some joke about fucking your mother, or Freud prescribing people cocaine. You know, some pretty wild stuff. But also there's something pressing as a concern that arises when people think of psychoanalysis, especially when people go through these different images of it. For instance, psychoanalysis can get expensive and folk may feel like not, it's getting nowhere, that they're just paying this good-for-nothing analyst who only listens and says something but after a very long time. Or, for instance, there is the worry that you're going to a professional who is a part of an institution that only takes your problems to make them fit their framework, in a sense that they're more concerned with reinstating their institution as relevant rather than helping you. Or perhaps that psychoanalysis is full of antiquated claims about sex, gender, and sexuality that have no place in contemporary affairs. Or that psychoanalysis per, uh, uh, has this persistence to return to trauma, which just amounts to dwelling on the past rather than facing the present state of affairs. So for a practice that is helping, is seeking to help people, it seems to do anything but move on from things, right? Also, what is what is it about follows this and follows that? Why are we talking about dicks everywhere? So this is exactly what I meant that. When we think of psychoanalysis, before we even have a notion of it that is concrete or that has been developed through the experience itself, we have already notions of what psychoanalysis is. I know when I was taught Freud, I had already so many different perspectives on how to regard it before even reading him. 
before engaging with him at face value. I had also a, a variety of professors that just talked down to Freud, so I just figured that it was just generally irrelevant to talk about Freud in many respects. But again, now I'm finding myself wanting to do a presentation about psychoanalysis, so I must have found something in it that actually made me turn away from all these resistances to psychoanalysis. So the fascinating thing so far is that we have nevertheless found ourselves talking around the act of analysis, where narrative myth mystifies psychoanalysis, and nevertheless, and I think this is key to what I want to do, is that by using this mythology, the, act, the very psychoanalytic act we're trying to start learning about becomes available to us.